perfectness from Yunus. And this imperfection from Yunus compared to how well Muhammad would do the, the same task is injustice from Yunus because this imperfection has stopped him from achieving a great rank which he as a human being has the natural he was naturally his human nature would allow him to achieve that great rank the human nature would allow him to, to achieve the, the best rank but his imperfection in doing the same work as Muhammad would do it stopped him from having this rank so this is an injustice from Yunus so therefore there is a certain amount of injustice which prophets and messengers must prophets and messengers must defeat this injustice from the offspring of Abraham so that they will achieve the position of Imam that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that my covenant is not to be given to the unjust. Which means that not all the prophets from your offspring will, ha will be Imams, Ibrahim. The prophets from your offspring who will defeat this injustice will ascend and be promoted to this rank. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in the Quran when he says, and throw down thy staff. But when he saw it, Rising as if it were a demon, he turned to a flea headlong. But it was said unto him, O Moses, fear not the emissaries, fear not in my presence. Fear not the emissaries, fear not in my presence. Save him who has done wrong and afterward has changed evil for good. Lo, I am forgiving and merciful. And the Imam Ali Salam continues and he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran indicated that which. Uh, some of the Imams from the offspring of Abraham peace be upon him and from them is Moses peace be upon him when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and thirst thy hand within thine armpit it will come forth white without hurt that will be another token so he is saying that the hand of uh, Moses will come out white which means free from injustice free from injustice because the man gives and takes with the hand the man gives and takes with the hand so a white hand refers to the justice of this man with the people and with God subhanahu wa ta'ala and Moses peace be upon him purified himself from the injustice by a high rank just like the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah says Save him who had done wrong and afterward had changed evil for good. Lo, I am forgiving and merciful. And he says that the Imam continues and he says that from them is Jesus, peace be upon him. And who also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Jesus that in the Quran, peace be upon me the day I am born and the day I die and the day I am resurrected alive. Jesus, peace be upon him, says in the Quran, peace be upon me the day I was born and the day I die and the day I am resurrected alive. Which means that Jesus, peace be upon him, achieved the rank of an Imam because he gives security for himself and to people. He gives security for himself. So he's saying, peace be upon me. He gives security for himself and to people. So Jesus, peace be upon him, achieved the rank of an Imam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also indicates in the Quran to some who, didn't, who did not achieve the rank of an Imam. Such as the Prophet Yahya, peace be upon him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Peace be upon him the day he is born and the day he dies and the day he is resurrected alive. So that means that Jesus, uh, pardon, that means that Yahya, peace be upon him, did not achieve the rank of an Imam so that he would be giving people and giving himself security. He only paved the road for Jesus, peace be upon him, and directed people to Jesus, peace be upon him. So he did not reach, reach the rank of an Imam to give himself security. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Peace be upon him the day he is born and the day he dies and the day he is resurrected to life. As to some people saying that Abraham, peace be upon him, was worried about his offspring. If they mean that he was wanting them to be Imams as well, that is incorrect. Because Abraham, peace be upon him, was never careful about this world nor about the afterworld.
He was never careful about this dunya and this minor world, nor about the afterlife and the akhirah. He was only careful to have the satisfaction of God subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, if a prophet, including Abraham, peace be upon him, prays for his offspring, it is only for the good from the offspring, after the prophets already know that they are good and that they are worshippers of God. And before Abraham, peace be upon him, there was Noah, peace be upon him. He cursed his son after God subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed, cursed him. After he knew that he was astray from the straight path and from the people of hell, he, Noah himself cursed his son. So Abraham and the prophets, they did not carry the burden of their offspring because they were their children. If they, if they did that because they were their children, then they would be on such a high level of their love of their ego and their deviation from the path. God forbid, they're high above that. They are the best creation, they're the elite of God subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. And Abraham and the prophets, they worried about their offspring and they carried the burden of their offspring. That only meaning the good ones from their offspring and the good worshippers of their offspring. Because they already knew that they were good. And they already knew that these good children will be their successors in calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking the burden and the harm and the suffering from people in order to spread the message of God subhanahu wa ta'ala and the word of God subhanahu wa ta'ala in his land. So Abraham and the prophets, peace be upon them all, they carried the burden of the, of the good ones from their offspring because they are successors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not because they are their children. And there is a major difference between those two things. Just like the difference in the love of God subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of the minor world and the love of one's desires and the love of one's wishes. First one in the heart of the good and second one in the heart of the bad one. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad ala imma wa nahdi wa nasalli wa taslimu wa tafira. This one certain question, this one, two couple of pages from the book of Namta Shabihat, it is only a slightest example of his knowledge, alayhi wa sallam. And this is the knowledge of Ahl al-Bayt, which be upon them, which nobody can ascend to and nobody can reach, except for one of them who has been purified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to access, to have access to the divine knowledge of God subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Although one vision enough should be efficient proof, and one istikhara enough, one istikhara should be sufficient proof, and one will should be efficient proof, one narration from Ahl al-Bayt should be efficient proof, one question from al mutashabihat should be efficient proof, and all of these proofs have been gathered in front of people today, so that they would recognize the righteousness of Imam al salam yet they fail to do that. So we only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to guide who he wants and to allow us to wash the mud and the dirt of our eyes and of our ears so that we would see the righteousness and that we would hear the righteousness. We would hear the man of righteousness from wherever he comes. Alhamdulillah wa shukr ladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtabi lawla an hadana Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad ala imma wa mahdiyin wa sallim tasleeman kathir. Okay, I wanted to save this recording for towards the end of the show. This is the last recording that was um, sent in, and this is truly a Hashim Studios radio exclusive. I got a recording in from Brother Zulfikar. Yeah, Zulfikar, who everyone knows from YouTube, who is huge on YouTube, and I heard him a couple of weeks ago in the Pal Talk room and there was just something about him and Mo felt it, there was just something about him, I mean when he speaks it's like he just drops all this wisdom, you know, all these pearls of wisdom, Alhamdulillah. He is a Hadith expert, you know, and he's such an amazing, such an amazing brother. You know, when I heard him in the Pal Talk room I quickly raced onto Hashim Studios chat and I was like, guys, Zulfikar is on the mic, quickly get there. And so many people raced in just to hear his voice. And um, so now you guys can hear him talk about his experience on a Hashim Studios exclusive. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, ala imma wal mahdiina wa sallam tasseema kathira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, my story about 
how I really embraced the message of Ahmad al Hassan alayhi salam, the Yamani, the messenger of Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam. I will start from the very beginning and what things really convinced me of accepting his message. It started like, first of all, I was in Paltok and at many a times what I do is discuss with the Shias and, you know, try to deliver the message of Ahlul Bayt And uh, doing such a thing was constant and I really kept pace with that every day where I debate Sunnis about Ahlul Bayt and how they must be the ones who we have to follow and we also have to evaluate the companions and so we go over such personalities and go over what happened into history this mainly happened in the Shia original uh, room in Patak and I also had friends over there many of uh, of the friends like tens of them and we basically love to propagate about Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam so one day in that very room someone mentioned this cult or this group of people and these group of people are called the 24s and I asked about them like who would actually think of such a group? The 24s where they believe in that there are more than one, there's more than one Mahdi. And this idea of course came to my attention and I really felt, you know, just confused. How, from where did they get that idea? And so, you know, the, the admin in the room started to tell me, be careful of them. Do not enter that room whatsoever. I told myself, why or what restraint is pulling us back from entering their room? Why would it be dangerous when we are absolutely certain of our faith? And so, by the days while I was on Paltok, I searched under Islam and looked over the rooms. And it was in the morning of uh, Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. So I looked over and I saw the Savior Room. I clicked on it, I entered, and all of a sudden I see Khadim al Hussein, I believe, on the mic, and Sayyid Jibrail sending a message. The messenger of Imam al Mahdi has arrived, the messenger of Jesus Christ, and the messenger of Elijah. And all of a sudden, I got confused like, this is something overly exaggerative on just one person. How can he, uh, you know, be like this messenger of a prophet and a messenger of Imam al Mahdi? I never heard of such thing. So I really felt in me that there is some misguidance out of it. And so through like the discussion, Khadim al Hussein was like, Have you read the will of the Holy Prophet? Welcome Zulfiqar, uh, have you read the will of the Holy Prophet? And I was like, no. What will? Uh, what are you talking about? So they posted the will itself. And I read through it until I reached Ahmed. It says, you know, after when Imam Al Mahdi Muhammad Ibn Hassan dies, pass it over, he passes over it to the son, Ahmed. Then, you know, I thought to myself, um, how can they prove, how can they actually prove that Imam Al Mahdi السلام, has a lineage? And so they posted hadiths for me that there shall be Mahdi's after the Mahdi. But all of a sudden, I started thinking back to my scholars, this is something completely wrong. According to the 